I feel like you you evolved as a human being and maybe even like maybe then there was like that change for you uh, after your divorce. I feel yeah. like oh, yeah. like that's like I was like, oh, so this is Steve. <laughs> so yeah. this is this is the Steve that was like bubbling up trying to get out. Yeah, I think I just like really was a go with the flow kind of guy for a really, really long time. And someone who is more alpha than me in my life and is close to me can dictate my my direction pretty mm. much. And I felt like when I was married, I, I got married because I felt like, well, this person really wants to marry me and I don't feel like anyone will ever really want to marry me. And the fact that this person does means that I need to jump into this and lock it in right away. And then I need to assimilate to marriage life and and then uh, homeowner life and then all of those things. And I was kind of just like coasting along while my ex-wife did all the work. And then when it came time to be like, oh, shit, this isn't my this isn't the life I want. I didn't want this in the first place. And I jumped into it from a place of severe insecurity and severe lack of control of my own life and things that I needed to do and wanted to do. And then so I was like, fuck, I guess I could take control of my life and stop hurting people like my ex-wife by mm -hmm. like pretending that married life and being a husband and and maybe having children are things that like I don't want you know and it's like and it's it's hurtful to someone that wants all of those things and I just came to a point where I was like this is hurtful to my ex this is hurtful to me this is hindering my life and then so after the divorce I was just like well, shit, now I'm just like free. I could get an apartment somewhere and I could kind of do whatever the hell I want. And and I'm not hurting someone in the process by like focusing on myself. And it was like for the first time in my life, I was focusing fully kind of on myself. And then I learned kind of that the insecurities are all in here mm -hmm. and you know all those things you learn when you grow up and it, you know maybe it was just a little later for me like everything else is you know yeah i mean actually on that last note that makes me think of it's like my favorite thing that i've heard over the past year it's like you are not your thoughts i love yeah. that because it's yeah. like because it's like the, those those voices in your head i don't know about you completely they're so full of self-sabotage <laughs> oh like, yeah it's just like it's like oh, yeah that's not gonna be a great thing just stay in right. your safe little box i i'm just in my head too much and i and there there's some things that have not changed from married steve to now a lot of those like destructive self-destructive thoughts are still there the things that are like Hey, I'm going to do this thing because it makes me happy. And then my brain goes like, yeah, but you're a lazy piece of shit and you don't deserve that. And it's like, fuck you, brain. And it's like, it's not as loud as it was, but you're right, man. It's so it's like you're not that those things are like old programming from, you know, upbringing from friends, pop culture, whatever you want to blame it on. Uh, and, and 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 you know your friends and neighbors and community and all of those things are a big aspect of that I think. But it's like, dude, I'm 38 and I'm barely like you can reprogram your brain. It just takes a really long time and it takes a lot of work. Just like everything else that's good that you you have access to, you know. But it just takes a lot of fucking work and it's like. You know, and we're and we're managing a pandemic and political shit and, you know, all this yeah. stuff. So it's I was, like, was going to say I was going to say it, it feels like, you know, we're all sponges and we're having to ring out. But it's like, no, because that sounds too simple. I feel like <laughs> it's more there's shit in a shag carpet. And it's just, it's, <laughs> it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work. Yeah. And like, there's a lot of shit that's just going to go way down to the bottom and you'll never get it. There's the shit that's like right on the top of the carpet that you can get off and it'll look nice. But there's the stuff deep down that's, re you got to like get into the fibers and get that brush and get in there. And so like, what's, you what's, know. what's one of the biggest things that you're trying to get out of your carpet, Steve? <laughs> Dude, honestly, like I have intense like self image issues. Like I don't see myself as this, like, you know, and people say like my girlfriend, my girlfriend is this like beautiful angel from a different planet. And somehow she like sees this like cute, handsome guy. And when I look in the mirror, I just see this like 
you know, this potato man. And uh, and I've never been able to not see the potato man. And, uh, you know, it's a real thing. I think a lot of people have that. And um, most people have a tiny version of that, at least. Um, but that's my that's like my thing. It's like I want to I want to be able to look in the mirror and be like, I fucking love this guy more than anything in the world. And this guy needs to be protected and taken care of. And I got to do the things to make this guy be good. And instead, I look at that guy and I go, this potato man's fucking up. Let me get away from this mirror and go <laughs> go figure shit out. Well, so I guess um, on that note, what what whether it be emotionally, mentally or physically, what are you have you taken like a first step towards trying to address that? Yeah, I mean, dude, I, I had some pretty hardcore therapy sessions like I'd say a year ago with this new therapist that I was just like, I need to go to therapy. It was right after my breakup with Brie and I was like learning a lot of things about how I handled that relationship. And, you know, you're always learning and you're learning from different people. And mm -hmm. Brie is just this amazing person that taught me so much. And um, but after when we broke up, it it was like, I need to go figure some shit out about myself. I need to know why I did this. I need to know why I'm like that. And also I need to figure out this self love shit. Mm -hmm. So I went into some like super deep therapy sessions with this great therapist. And she was just like, she basically told me you have to, if you want to change the way you see yourself and if you want to love yourself, you have to like, you have to pretend at first. You have to like look at you have to make it a point to look at yourself in the mirror and just go whether you don't believe it or not. Just say, I love this guy. This guy gets the job done. You know, he gets me out of bed. He gets me. Bre he's breathing. He's got everything. You know, he's lucky. You, you go down all the list of all the good things and then you go like. I love this guy. And then you walk away and it's like, so she would take me to the mirror in the office and be like, do it. And I'd be like, I don't know why I can't do this. <laughs> like I can't even do it with my therapist because mm -hmm. it just feels so it felt disingenuous and it felt it didn't feel real. And it felt like I was just fooling myself. But I guess that's the like, those are the first steps. Mm -hmm. And eventually you do that enough to the point where like you believe it. And then once you believe it, then you can really analyze like how you got there and like what all that was and how you had to fool yourself in the beginning, which isn't necessarily like maybe the best way to do it. But I tried and I just... I can't make my brain like it's just my brain is on this loop of like fail, 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 like way in the back. And it's just like I can't destroy that loop for some reason, even with like faking. I love myself. I love what I do. I love what my body does for me type shit. It's like really. So I just kind of like gave up. <laughs> on it and then and then things got really shitty with the valley folk as you remember uh not too what? long ago and then all this shitty shit happened and i when i needed my therapist the most i you know i st stuck around a little bit longer and dealt with all those feelings and stuff but all the self-love stuff took a, a, a back seat to the immediate like fixing my emotional status and making mm -hmm. sure I'm not depressed every single day over the decisions that we had to make and, and, you know, big changes in our lives. So it's kind of just all taken a back seat, man. Mm -hmm. I know what the, f the first steps are and they're really good first steps. And I have all these books and audiobooks. and my therapist was just like, read these books, listen to these audiobooks. And I guarantee it, it'll just click someday. It's just like exercising, right? If you do it every day and you fucking eat well and you put the work in, you're going to look good and you're going to feel good. And it's going to help all of this shit. But it's like hard. It's very <laughs> it's hard. It's fucking hard. 